You are the God of all flesh. You need to check your internet again. You are the King of glory. We honor and we worship you, O God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Just give us. I want us to pray before we start. I want us to just thank God that you are here today. It's because God has what? I've done that already. It's because God has been faithful to you. Um, There used to be a time where when things like this happen, the poor man like you and me will run and hide because we do not know what will happen to us. But we're seated here and we're hearing every day of the people we look up to catching this disease and asking that we pray for them. The Bible says it's not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. It is of the Lord who showeth mercy. So if you are standing today, it's because God has had mercy on you and me. And we ought to say thank you to Jesus. So I want us to begin from that, from that place. Say thank you that you have life, that you are alive today. Just open your mouths and say thank you. Lord, I am grateful. 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 Lord, I'm grateful for the life that I have. I'm grateful for the things you have done. I give you praise, oh God. That thing in my eyes will not work. Father, Lord, I honor you. I worship you. I exhort you. I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We are going to pray for everyone the world over who is afflicted by this virus right now. We are going to pray for them. We're going to ask that God would heal them, that God would touch them, that the healing power of God will come upon them, that even as two, as, uh, as two or three gathered all over the globe today, that the power of heaven will begin to rise from the gathering of his people and will begin to go to these places and begin to bring healing the way of his children. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray for yourself. The Bible says that a, a wise man sees battle, sees danger, and hides himself. And the Bible says, a, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, the, he will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I need you to talk to God this evening and say, Lord, there is evil in the land. I am running to hide in you. There is evil in the land. I am coming to hide in you. Father, Lord, make way for me. Help me to hide in you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus zandalege brato lukadupa tali madeke sekele gabradu to shotoluma di kansa kantali brade zegede de depo toluma di kashandalige zeketeli brada kaseketele zandalu breteke teliba do data yema zegede de 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 batulamiga zekete ege zekete libra tulamiga sakandale zapatu lamiga shekele botolo jogododo do do patulamiga zikata yemega zika Tale zonto li brada kase kelege de botolu madika yandale jege de 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 batula mega seke teli brada gazande le bradu toto ipat la mega sakanda le brede zagada de 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 botolu madika zeke te ega zanda li brade ke seke te la muda da de ke te gabro do do tolu madika seke le mada janda le broko soko toli brada tali madika de 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 gabadu tolu maga seke te li badi jende le Braka seke teli badu dade zege batu la miga zikantali brado boto lumadi kasanda liga de gede Gaza di katale mege de 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 botolo joko tolu brada de kasanta li madi kasanda le jege de 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 batu la miga seke lege bo Father Lord we worship your name Father Lord we worship your name Father Lord we worship your name ikala madeke seke teli badu do iga zeke teli brada te Eke le badu sakanta li bradita shandale brede bototo lumada kasanta li brada teke te kateli gade dade gazinda li brada talege de jege de de bototo lumadi gasaka li bade zende li brada teke te li bradu tayama de Father Lord we give you praise Father Lord we give you praise Father Lord we give you praise Thank you God of heaven Thank you God of heaven to you be all the glory to you be all the honor and to you be all adoration thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus in jesus mighty name we have prayed hallelujah father lord we worship your name have your way oh god in jesus name
please be seated remember to sit far away from each other because i hear sometimes that the government sends people to go and take a look don't do anything just keep it cover it take this one and hold on to it hallelujah i don't think that you need to share from the it's going to stream on the professional page so that may be the place you are copying from i won't be able to check because i'm busy so you need to check hallelujah I'm sorry, we're, um, we're streaming from a brand new whatever, so we need to make sure that we're doing it right. Hallelujah. Father Lord, I commit this time in your presence into your hand. I ask, Lord, that all that we will do here today will glorify your name. Let your name be glorified, O oh God. Let this bring glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Okay, so, are we live? Father Lord, we just want to ship your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So, welcome everybody to the second service at the Well Oasis International. My name is Bidemi Makmodi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, they might have, um, we might have been in a situation where we can't move around as we ought to move around. And so we can't congregate in the same place. But we give God praise because he's not limited by space. He's not a God that has the kind of limitations that we have. So wherever you are right now, you're logged in. Welcome to church. I trust that God will speak to you today. We've been in the series Abiding for the last five weeks. And this is actually our fifth um, ep, uh, fifth installment on the series Abiding. Last week we looked at finding water and we talked about the walk of the root, how the root will go through and break through barriers to make sure that it gets to water. And we're talking that not water that is poured on it, not water that is on, on the surface. We're talking about deep waters so that it can find sustaining water for all time. So that, and then we talked about the fact that that water is how the branches, the trunk, the leaves, everything that makes the tree. It is that water that the tap root gets that helps it live. Hallelujah. And produce and fulfill its destiny. Essentially in the end we ended up in the place that this water as a believer flows from inside of you. Because the Bible says he that believeth in him says out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Today we want to go on quickly to the fifth installment like I have said before. And today our topic is the art of dying. The A-R-T of dying. The A-R-T of dying. When we talk about about abiding when we talk about abiding there is many things that we can talk about and on this series which will run for at least 15 weeks if not more there is so much that we'll be talking about when it comes to the subject matter of abiding if you remember our foundation scripture is taken from john 15 if you open with me to john chapter 15 it says i am the true vine and my father is the husband man every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit in verse 4. It says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Hallelujah. So essentially, it is clear. This journey that we are on, anyone that wants to make a success of the journey of going with God, must be entrenched in God himself. Praise Jesus. Anyone that wants to make a what? A success of going with God must be what? Entrenched in God himself. There is, this is not the time, especially in this time that we're in. This is not a time to visit God. This is a time to allow him make his habitation with us. Make room for him. Stay away from all the things that make it difficult for the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. Because there are many things, if you thought it was coronavirus alone, how many of us heard of the explosion in Akura yesterday? It was weird. Tell me where someone would pack a full vehicle of explosive. Where was he going to? If not that the devil is on a rampage. So the first thing is that the, the wise man or, or see it 
foreseeth evil or seeth evil and hideth his head. There is no place better than hiding in God. And this process of hiding in God happens a lot more seamlessly when we are abiding in him. Hallelujah. So today we want to look at, like I said, the art of dying. Now let's just talk. All of life, what are we trying to do? We're doing our best to live well. Is that not what we're doing? We go to school so that we can live well. We marry well so that we can live well. We eat right so that we can live well. We save and invest so that we can live well. Everything that man is focused on is on living well. (laughs) When you are one that is abiding in God, you will realize that you are wasting your time doing everything to live well. Everything that man does in Christ ought to be geared towards dying well. Hallelujah. Now imagine this scenario with me. Imagine that you just had a baby. You just had a baby and you brought the baby to church for dedication. Or if you are in, in, from some parts of, of, of Nigeria where they, they, they name the baby seven days after birth. You know, on the eighth day I show up to name your baby. And when we're finished the naming ceremony, I begin to pray for your baby. And a baby that is just eight days old, I say to you, in the name of Jesus, your child will die well. How many of us will say amen? But you see, if you understand the art of dying, if you understand that the life that we have, that we're doing everything to live well for, is actually a dress rehearsal for how we will live after here. If you understand that everything you do in the flesh now has an impact on what will happen to you in the life after now, then you would, just, when I pray that your child will die well, you will say a big amen. Because what it will mean is that that child had lived his or her life so well that they are able to die well. What does it mean to die well? To get to the end of your journey and just know that I am ready. To get to the end of your journey and not have any trepidation. Uh, Where am I going? To get to the end of your journey. And even when other people are saying we don't know what will happen to us. You can categorically say, I know that if I close my eyes now, I die well. You say, is that biblical, Bidemi? Yes, it is biblical. Paul said, to live is Christ. To die is gain. Essentially, Paul was saying, I've lived my life at this stage in such a way that if I die, it's gain for me. I lose nothing by dying. So the first thing that I want you to just write somewhere and reflect on is that if at this point you are still afraid of dying, then it means that you've not lived well. I don't care how much money you've had. I don't care what businesses you've you've started and run. I don't care how famous you are. If at this stage of your life, it doesn't matter whether you are 20, you are 30, you are 50, you are 70, you are 75. Whatever your age is and you are a man in Christ or a woman in Christ. If at this point you are afraid to die, you have not lived well. And so there is an art to dying. What does it mean? When you say something, there is an art to something. It means that there is a style, there is a swag to dying. Hallelujah. There is a swag to dying that we must embrace and inculcate and imbibe. If we want all of this for offer we are doing right now to culminate in something. If you go with me to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, 12 from verse 23. It says, And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. So Jesus, the first thing he says in this scripture is, There is glory coming. Now, in the world today, if you hear there is glory coming, you are probably thinking that somebody will appoint you a minister for something and give you the license to bring your Ghana mouse goes to carry When you hear those kinds of things, you say, oh, glory has landed. If someone announced to you that glory is coming, the tendency is you are are thinking, maybe I'm going to win the lottery. When someone says to you, glory is coming, the tendency is somebody somewhere is expecting a promotion. (coughs) 
But Jesus announced, he said, there's glory coming. He said, this is the hour, the hour of glory. Right now, the son of man will be glorified. Then in verse 24, he says, verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Essentially, what did Jesus just say? He said, there's glory coming. This is the hour of glory. But the way you step into glory is that you will die. <laughs> Again, what are you doing in Lagos? Is it not trying to live well? That's why all of us carried our bags and we ran from our villages now. There's nobody. Where there, I know there are people who are from Lagos. But how many of us in the population of those who live in Lagos right now? How many of us are from Lagos? The reason we came was we are looking for green and pastures. We are trying to live well. I want to live better than my parents are living or have lived. Is that not what it is? And Jesus is saying that the embrace of glory is the embrace of death. And yet we've been taught and taught and taught that we should entrench ourselves to live forever. Every small thing we are praying, God forbid that we not die, we live. So who is going to die? But of course, this is not death in the physical. Because the Bible tells me that the number of years that are apportioned to people to die, to, for, to a man to live and after that death, and then after that death, what comes next? Judgment. This is ordering your life. This is a daily death that you die so that your life at the point of judgment makes sense to you and to God. In verse 25 of John chapter 12 that we're reading, he said, he said, he that loveth his life shall do what? Can you see that? When I prayed for your child and said, may your child die well, I was nice. I actually was praying for the entire lifespan of that child. He said, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Now, when you see the expression hate, you think, do I hate myself and begin to stab myself or something? No. It just means that when you do not reckon that life in the flesh is any big deal, when there is nothing that you will not sacrifice to ready yourself for life in the spirit, then what has happened is that even the life you have in the flesh, God will preserve it. If I had to say this in another way, one of the easiest way to live long is to live like the life is not your own. To live it on the terms of Jesus. Because if you are living it on God's terms and God's terms alone, then he is compelled according to the scripture to keep you. He will keep you in the now and he will keep you in the eternal. Hallelujah. Who is with me so far? He said, he that loved his life shall lose it and he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now, verse 27, my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause come, came I unto this hour. And if I would just throw in verse 28, Father glorify then thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Hallelujah. It was at a place of that absolute surrender. When Jesus surrendered himself to death. When he didn't try, he wasn't doing his best to try and say, I am going to live by myself. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. The moment Jesus agreed that he understood that there was a need to die. He said, Lord, as I'm dying. So the glory that he talked about in verse 23, he said, glorify your name. And God said, you don't understand. I glorified myself twice already because you are going to die. Now Jesus is the one that said that greater works than he did will we do. We want to cast out demons on TV so that people will say we are anointed. But we don't want to die. Let me pray for you today. May you die well in Jesus name. 
It's a prayer you should lay hands on yourself and your children and pray and say, Father, why everybody is struggling to live well? Help me to die well. Because what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and he loses his own soul? But again, like I told you, this is not about dying in the flesh. So don't worry. Those of you that want to live until you are 250 and be wearing diapers and they will be grinding your food for you, no problem. Jesus is capable. He will keep you. This is a metaphor for how we are supposed to live on a daily consistent basis. So like that child that I prayed for, And I said, may this child you are dedicating today, may this child die well. As a parent, you ought to say a resounding amen. Because I just calculated the lifespan of that child, whether it's 70, whether it's 100. And I went from day 7 or day 8 to the last day of that child's life. And I said, this child will live the way God is ordained for the child to live. The point I'm trying to make is that the only way you get to that place where heaven will say, I have glorified myself or I have glorified my name because of you is that on a daily basis, when you wake up, your first question to God in a manner of speaking is, Lord, how am I dying today? This is impopular. We don't want to die. (laughs) Hallelujah. I guess I'm saying to you that you ought to plan to die rather than planning to live. Because in this life, tell me, how many of us, at least in Nigeria, four weeks ago saw today? Even if you had heard that coronavirus was somewhere, how many of us saw that banks that will not give money to save waiting to, to save life? Give money, give scholarship to, for the, one of the brainiest child to, children to go to school. That in 70, how many hours are building facilities? In 126 hours are building facilities, state of the art facilities to push that death back. And here's the thing. If we just had been living well, perhaps we would not have had to deal with this. If we had been planning to die well, we probably would not have had to deal with the things that we deal with now. The process of living in glory begins in death. Life in all its glory is hid within the seed. And it doesn't manifest unless a decision is made. And that decision is that the seed agrees to go to fall into the ground and die. You are God's seed in the earth. If you remember when we did the wisdom of the seed, I talked about the fact that you are God's seed in the earth. That's why in Genesis chapter 2, God ceased from all his work. So the reason why God could cease from his work was that he threw you and me as seed in the earth. And what we're supposed to do is agree for him to bury us. We grow. Some of us will grow to mighty oaks. Others of us will just grow to a cashew tree size but the point is every one of us is planted so that we can bring glory to his name why what diffusing kingdom or or yes diffusing kingdom uh, in the earth that's what all of this is about but you see any man that chooses that I will not plan to die dies a useless death dies a death that his family are wondering we don't even know where he is now and then they will begin to conjecture. That's the man that when they are doing his uh, service of songs, everybody is looking for nice things to say. Because in their mind, at least let these nice things comfort his family because we have no idea where he's going. How about you plan and die to die in such a way that when you get where you are going, <laughs> when you get to the end of your journey, everyone says, ah, we know without a shadow of doubt. But even if man will not say, You at the last point of your life say, Lord, I'm ready to embrace you now. Because I planned every day of my life by dying daily that I might, this moment would count. The reason why we are stressed out by the information about coronavirus is because we have not planned to die. Those who have planned to die don't want to catch it. But they are not afraid of it. That's the reality. 
I don't want to catch it. But I'm not afraid of it. Because at this point, if God calls me home, it means that my work is done. But as long as I have something left to do, and I've been planning my life daily to die properly, he's not going to take me. So the big fear of he is because we have not been living or planning to die well. Praise Jesus. So tell yourself, I will plan to die well. <laughs> if I to remove the will, I plan to die well. The first thought when you have read the decision to die that should come to your mind is number one, every day is a gift. The man who is planning to die well knows that every day is a gift. Today, the 29th of March 2020 is a gift I have received. And you see, don't be bad. Don't, be, don't, don't have bad behavior. You receive a gift and, and squander it and use it wrong. If you receive an expensive gift, a precious gift, the tendency is you will keep it well. I have a few wristwatches that my husband bought for me. I don't just leave them on the floor in my house. Because they are precious to me, I keep them well. The day that you receive every morning when your eyes wake up and you are able to draw breath again is another gift that God gave you. One, to make sure you are dead through the day. Number two, to make sure that in dying through the day, you are planning to die well. The second thought that she uncalled to you as a seed that has agreed that I can be buried in the ground because it's dying time. The second thing that she uncalled to you is that every day, every gift, every daily gift that I have received, I will account for it. Every gift, every daily gift, that is every gift of, the gift of every day that I have received. I'm not a mathematicist, but in, I have lived 49 years, almost 50. As a matter of fact, I'm in my 50th year. If you had to do that by math, you would, have, you would do 49, that is 362 or 366 or 365 times 49 for starters. Do you understand it? And then you do the fraction of what I had lived this year. It's a lot of days. That God is going to stand in front of me and say, okay, be the me on the 14th of February, 1985. How did you leave? Every single day, especially every day after we came to Christ, we will have to account for. Praise Jesus. The third thing that I want you to consider is that everything that happens today Hello, will impact upon your tomorrow. The days are given, the gifts of the days are given individually. But every day has an impact on the nest and the nest and the nest. So you can't even say, well, I did well on Monday. I died through Monday. But you see on Tuesday, I didn't do well. Don't do it well on Tuesday will impact upon your Wednesday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fourth thing that I want, don't want you to forget is that ultimately, that final day, there will be judgment. The art of dying. I'm not trying to scare us. I was asking God, I said, Lord, <clears throat> in this time where everybody is preaching 12 ways to thrive in a crisis, why are you telling me to teach people how to die? Who wants to be listening to how to die at this time. Is it not actually better to me to just go and tell them 14 steps to climbing out of a hole? We do not sound more hopeful than saying to people, we are learning the art of dying. <laughs> but as I did not send myself, Uncle, I would have preferred to do 42 ways to thrive. All of you will be killing of, falling over yourself to show up on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope, the BMM app to take your own portion of how to thrive in a crisis. But I've been told to tell you that there is that to live well is to die well. And so you must learn the art of dying. 
Praise Jesus. In life, the thing that drives every single one of us is a quest for more. I want more money. I want more fame. I don't want more children. But there was a day I wanted more children. Yeah? I want more what? In fact, I even want more heights. The only thing I don't want right now is more weight. More shoes. Thank you. More bags. More money in the bank. Everything about the life of man is characterized by more. And when Jesus started this conversation in John chapter 12, his announcement is that more is coming. And then he said, how more we come is you die. I thought when you die, you lose everything you own. How does that in any way bring more? If we look at the life of the seed, the corn of wheat that was talked about, it's one grain of corn. You put it in the ground. At least when it is done, if it grows and then it's properly done on the day of harvest, there is no way that one grain of corn will not give you, and let me conservatively say, 300 grains of corn. Assuming it had th- uh, three, st- three um, cobs, and each cob had 100 grains. But you know it doesn't have three cobs, right? You know that one stalk of that one maize, one grain of maize, can sometimes have up to seven, eight, nine, ten cobs of corn in it, or ears of corn in it. You know that, right? And you know that sometimes you harvest and you leave it and you come back and new one is growing, right? See the multiplication that would happen if you just died to yourself and I just died to myself. We will not be begging people to come to Christ. Because they've interacted with you. You are a dead man walking. It is attractive enough for them to want to come and see the God that you serve. So yes, we must understand and recognize that we live well so that we can die well. And that real life is eternal life, which can only happen after we are dead. Real life is eternal life. All these ones... Don't count. Because you know why this does not count? In all those things that you have been doing and everybody has been clapping for you and everybody has been saying you are the best, you are the best, you are the best, you are the best, you are the best. It just takes a few years for you to die. And they forget because another one will sprout in your place. And I'm not even saying you are a bad person. The first few weeks that my father died... I thought about him every single day. I'll lie to you if I say to you now that I I think about him every single day. When life presses me, I don't remember. I am dealing, I'm trying to live myself that I don't remember that three years ago or four years ago I had someone called Papa. Do you get it? So what we are looking at is not that you roll over and take cyanide or something and die today. God forbid that's not a conversation because that will be another problem. What we are looking at today is a daily dying. If you open with me to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16, I'll show you something. Matthew 16 from verse 24 to 25. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. In Jesus' day, people literally lost their life. Today is not so much a martyrdom that we're talking about. It is about giving up our rights on a daily basis. But even if it was a martyrdom thing, what's wrong with dying knowing that you are going to embrace your maker? What's so, what's, what's so, so exciting about in Lagos that you have money, you can't go to market to buy food to eat right now? It's not better to go somewhere you don't need money. You don't spend money. You are not hungry. Just think about it for a minute. Praise Jesus. If we look at Matthew chapter, that Matthew 16, he said, lay down your life. Lay down your life. Lay down your life. All of us know the song, my life is not my own. Eh, 
It's very nice to sing until someone asks you to give. I'm not talking about your money. I'm not talking about your arm. Somebody asks you to give your phone. Give your phone. Okay, give ordinary time, Abby. Then you begin to say, I did not come to Lagos because of you. The implication of giving our lives to Jesus is not to, is not to invite him as equal to us. Because that's what some of us think. That when I give my life to Jesus, we'll become pallies. It is not even to make him number one in our lives. A lot of us boast that Jesus is our number one. <laughs> I used to boast that. Jesus is my number one. And he told me, who is number two then? I'm like, ah, huh? but if you did number one, that one, you did front already now. He said, why would anybody even line up behind me? He said, I'm not, I'm not here to do, it's not a parity thing for me. It, this is, give me everything that you are. If I'm in Christ, truly in Christ, I am nothing, I am nobody. That's what he's asking for. He said, just surrender it all to me. That is how to die. When you're surrendered, you're saying, how does that really work in real life? You wake up in the morning and he says to you, you see that person that hurt you six years ago? And if not for Jesus, you would have hung yourself. How badly he hung you. Today he needs money. Go to your account and send him money. How many of us want to do that? It's bad enough I didn't kill that person six years ago. So I've been nice. Good enough, I've forgiven them because I don't see them again. That's a good thing. I don't talk about them. I don't make, they call me, I say hello to them and I really mean my hello to them. Sometimes they even ask me to pray for them. I pray for them and I'm, I, really, I really mean praying for them. But having to share my money with them, that's kind of hard. But because I'm dead to Christ, I don't ask to what end? What I just recognized quickly is that, mon- that money was given to me to keep until that person came back to collect their money. <laughs> Laying down our lives or losing it speaks to giving Jesus our all. To put him in charge of all that we are. To submit to him and live according to his dictates. That is what giving ourselves away means. Giving ourselves away is not give your check and keep your fornication. Giving ourselves away is not give your voice and sing great songs to him. But keep your bad habits. Giving yourself away means that when Jesus takes a look at you, you are a gift to him. The question is, not you, but me, Bidi me. Are you a gift to Jesus today? Hallelujah. If we look at that scripture that we had been looking at, it talks about, in Matthew chapter 4, for instance, I'm talking about the art of dying daily now. The first one I said, lay down your life. The second thing I'm asking you to do is found in Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers and he said unto them follow me and I will make you fishers of men and they do what? they straightway left their nets and followed and going on from thence he saw two other brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother in a ship with Zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them And they immediately left the sheep and their father and followed him. Number two way of dying daily is to obey steadfastly. The Bible said straight away. That is not delayed obedience. You know, sometimes we think obedience means delayed obedience. And God tell me make I do am. I know saying that two years ago, tell me make I do am. But at least I don't do am. One thing that God taught me is that delayed obedience is not obedience. Because for everything in God, there is a time and there is a season. 
So sometimes to get your instructions and begin to dilly dally, you may obey five minutes or five months later or five hours later, but your obedience may no longer count in the scheme of what God was trying to achieve when he gave the instruction. If you see the story that we read or the account that we read of the men that were picked, that Jesus was picking to be his disciples. The first two that he saw, Andrew and Peter, the moment he called them, they left everything. They did what? They followed him. James and John did the exact same thing. Now, you know there's somewhere else where they said, let us go and bury our dead and come back. What did he say to them? He said, let the dead bury their dead. So steadfastly, steadfast obedience, immediate obedience is another way that we do what? We die daily. The third thing you will find is submit to be caught. C-U-T, caught. If you read John chapter 15, verse number two. (laughs) Verse 15, chapter 15 of John verse two. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. How do you take a branch away from a tree? Eh? Then he said, every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it. How do you purge something? You cut it. Another version will say he pruned it. That it may bring forth more fruit. Here's the thing that a lot of us don't consider. In Christ, if you do well, he will cut you. If you don't do well, they will cut you. Here's the problem. You can't escape cutting. What I'm asking God to help me do is, anytime they put a knife to me, let it be for the right reason. Do you understand it? Because if I'm not bearing fruit, he will, come, he will cut me because I'm taking out space. And he says, those ones that were pruned or cut, will be do, what will he do with them? They will cast them into fire. But he also says that if I bear fruit, let's say I bear 40%, and my potential is 90%, he will come and he will cut so that I can do what? Bear much fruit. Now, if you go back to that hustle that I talk, talked about, that the entire, the entire entirety of a man's hustle, has, and your brother will say this, that the spiritual content of a man's hustle in on the streets of Lagos and everywhere else in the world is more. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. And now I'm showing you how the easiest way to get more. Just submit. Let the guy cut you. Stop running. I like the scripture in Romans chapter 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you do what? Present your bodies. As what? Living sacrifices. Holy and acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service. And do not be trans- conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now if you go back to that first. I said present your bodies. Living sacrifices. Oh no. Sacrifices are usually dead. An animal only agrees to be a sacrifice when you have. But he could have decided that, okay, if I won't beat him as a sacrifice for the month, I will kill her. But he said, no, come. You'll be alive. With your two legs, you'll climb on the altar. You will stretch, stretch yourself like Isaac did so that Abraham can tie him and they will be bringing the knife. You are a living sacrifice. The reason why we must talk about the art of dying is the method of being a sacrifice scares every one of us. And the reason why that is scary is because we are enveloped in flesh. And flesh just wants what is good for flesh. Do you get it? So submission to be caught will now need to be something that we consciously surrender to. If you are not consciously surrendered, you cannot exactly say they are cutting me and I'm agreeing. Once you see knife, what's the instinct? 
Have you not seen somebody that said, I want to die, I want to die? Have you not seen them? Somebody died and they are crying, they are rolling on the ground. I will die, leave me, make I die, leave me, make I die. Then a vehicle starts to come their way. What do they do? Eh? They jump up and take off. Why is that so? Because in the core of man, man hates pain. So even though he or she wanted to die, he he or she was hoping that they would die without feeling anything. But as long as that is not the case, they don't want to die. So you have to settle it in your spirit. Report it to your soul. Let your soul instruct your flesh that is going to be hard, but you cannot move. Why, you will ask. Your flesh will cry out. Why? You say, because we are going to, we are submitted, we are surrendered. They need to cut us. Hallelujah. I'm talking to us about the art of daily dying. Praise Jesus. We can do nothing until we abide. Why abiding is hard for most of us is because God walks, wants to cut us. And being a Christian and child of God, uh, the objective is a number of things. Number one, you must make heaven. Isn't it? Number two, while you are walking to die well so that you make heaven, you must represent him well on the earth. Is that not it? Number three, you must point others to him. Number four. (laughs) Ah, You must surrender to be caught. Because number one through to three cannot happen if you're not in the, if you're not submitted to the cutting process of heaven. The use of of pruning is in the preserving the integrity of the tree. How many of us know that? That when you come to a tree and you begin to see that the tree has white patches, it means that the tree has, is infected with something. What does the dresser, the tree dresser or the vineyard dresser do, do? He picks those, every branch that has those things and he cuts them off. Why does he do that? He does that so that the integrity of the tree can be preserved. What is the essence of a tree? Or what is the purpose of a tree? The purpose of a tree is to bear fruit. Is that not it? So the integrity of a tree can only be preserved if the process that we allow the tree to go through brings forth fruit. Enables the tree to bring forth fruit. If you've been called to represent God in the earth and we are still so full of ourselves, when was the last time you took a look at yourself in the mirror? I'm not talking of those expensive mirrors you buy in your home. I'm talking of the, about the mirror of the word. Because if you truly want to see you, check how you look be in the word. The first thing to dine daily is that you must grow and produce. That's, this is exciting. A dead man is bringing forth. That's the paradox of this thing. This living in Christ that we're talking about. This dwelling or abiding in Christ that we're talking about. It is something that cannot always, you can never really, really, really explain it. You are reckoned to be dead in Christ. Yet you are bringing forth the greatest amount of fruit. So in the end, dying is not a disservice. Praise Jesus. To grow and produce, you must die. And some of us, Dying is different. Dying is different from one person to the other. Do you understand it? For me, one of the greatest dying processes that I've gone through season after season after season is obscurity. To just not be known anywhere. It doesn't matter how you you try. So after a while, you just realize that, okay, you just give up. And you don't even do anything to be known again. You just stay. For some of us, it is that for a period of time, God will just keep you on lockdown. Lagos said, state said, don't go out anyhow. We are not even able to obey 100%, except for me. (laughs) Because me, I was already on lockdown by myself in my house. My house is my favorite place, so I'm not missing anything outside my house. As long as Mahmoud is still feeding me, I'll be fine. Praise Jesus. 
So to grow and produce, there is a hacking that must happen. The fifth thing that I see in Dime Daily is that your mindset must shift. A lot of us, the fight against daily death is nothing else but how our mind has been configured from time. So you take a look at something and what you have always believed is the reason why you are struggling to submit to the brain, the new level of revelation that God is bringing you to. I was talking to my mentees yesterday and I was telling them, I said, God is not interested in your neat boxes. Don't come here and tick boxes, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm really mature in Christ. When I wake up, I pray for one hour. After I pray for one hour, I worship for two hours. Then after that, I read my Bible for 38 hours. All of that, we don't see anything in your life that says you are doing it. You're just going through the motions. Because all the why, they've told you that anyone that does that is the one that is living in Christ. So you are checking the boxes for activity. But you cannot even take a call. And not get ang- angry. <laughs> Praise Jesus. A shift in your mindsets. This um, last week, because there's another week today, I received a call. Someone I don't know, and he said, um, "On so so and so, the so and so person said we should deliver stuff to you, and we delivered it." I remembered. He said, but she has refused to pay us. I'm asking her. She says, you are supposed to pay. So I said, nobody told me that I was supposed to pay for anything. The guy said, I'm sorry, ma, but that's what she said. She said, she's not even taking my calls. She said, I should call you. I said to the guy, do you know me? He said, no. Do you even know my name? He said, no. I said, how can I pay you money? Immediately he apologized and he dropped the call. Three minutes later, not up to five minutes, the Holy Spirit said, call him back and ask him to send his account number and pay that money. <laughs> Guys, that's not because I don't die. If not, no way. I will call the girl when I'm done with her. She will want to leave for her village that day. Because it was disrespectful on many levels. But the Holy Spirit said, call the young man back. Ask him to send his account number and pay the money. It wasn't a lot of money. It was one five. So I said, okay, sir. Called him. He sent the account number and I sent the money. And he said, don't even dare to ask the girl why she behaved that rudely. And I said, okay, sir, I will not do it. But when I, after like two hours, I said, you have grown. If not, that quarrel will foresee the quarrel I am today. Do you understand it? Little things like that, because you can't sit here, I can't stand here and be boasting to you that eh, I die daily, and then one small thing, I will just fall flat on my face. Shift your mindset. Because the mindset that I had was that when you enter into a contract with me, you fulfill the terms. Don't shift. In fact, there's nothing I hate more than you shift goalposts on me. It makes me like want to go crazy. But that day, I just obeyed jelly. Because I thought about it later and I said, perhaps this guy, many people are owing him like that. And there's no food at home. And he's a rider. He's a delivery person. His business is probably has gone to a halt right now because of the no movement and no business thing. Will 1,500 naira kill me? Surely not. Hallelujah. Number six step to dying daily is that we must practice spiritual disciplines. Practice spiritual disciplines. These are practices that are found in scripture that promote spiritual growth. Habits of devotion and experiential Christianity. A lot of us are just living to Christi- we are living Christianity in the theory. First, you say I have ulcer. Automatically, you manufacture ulcer. Or you say, I, when I fast, I have migraines. Pray. You say I don't know how to pray for long. I like to worship. 
Okay, come, let's worship. He said, the worship leader doesn't know these good songs. So, the thing is not moving me. Guy, what do you want? They say, sir, they say, I ah, know. I'm a graduate. I have 45 PhDs. There are certain things I can do. There are certain things a man of my caliber should not do. Spiritual disciplines. Because there's no way you are that person who is dying daily that God will not put your shoulder to work. He will ask you to do things. He will tell you to intercede for other people. When was the last time you came to the place of prayer and you were not a part of the prayer? It frustrates me when I ask someone to lead prayer. (laughs) And he begins to say, let us pray for our wives. Let us pray for our husband. Let us pray for our goat and the cockroach in our kitchen. He frustrates me. I'm thinking, did you not hear that? How many people have died in Italy? That will not concern you. Self-preservation is the first sign that we are not dying. Hallelujah. Number seven, trait of dying daily. You must not lose your sense of awe and wonder. This is very critical. If you don't even remember all the other ones, do not forget this one. A lot of body of Christ have forgotten how awesome it was when they got born again. These days, they tell us what God did. And what's our response? Our response is, yes, and then two years ago, something happened. You do not even allow God to get the glory. From something that someone is in awe of, you bring your own bigger testimony to douse what they are saying. Why? Because you've lost a sense of awe. People say to me, somebody sends you 5,000, you are thankful. Somebody sends you credit of 1,000, you call them to thank them. And I'm like, what was I supposed to do? He said, no, now you are blessing their lives. So, no, they don't need to do anything for me. Absolutely nothing. If someone wakes up today and brings you a pair of shoes, God, you don't know the work that God did. Do you know how many years ago God started that journey? The journey of bringing the person to Lagos. The journey of making the two of you meet. The journey of making sure that the guy had a job. The journey of one day the guy woke up and decided to buy shoes, albeit for himself. The journey of he took himself to the market, he bought shoes, he got home, they were not his size. And the journey of he thinks about it and he said, well, let me go and give to that other brother in church. You sit there, you, you know, some of us will say, if he sized him, he would not have given it to me. You don't know how many things God had flipped to get it to you. When we lose our sense of awe, it can be sad. Really, 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 really sad. Believers that don't, nothing excites them anymore. Say, praise the Lord. Say, hallelujah. Say, get up. Oh, I'm tired. Say, sit down. Oh, when when can we go? What is your problem? You think you could have woken up this morning by yourself? How? How, 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 how? You woke up by yourself this morning. Hasn't anyone told us that every night we go to bed, we die temporarily? And when we wake up, it's because heaven tapped us and says, it's time to wake up again. I've given you the gift of another day. How do you lose a sense of awe of that? How do you allow allow life to, 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 to push you to the extent that these things no longer excite you? How? How do you even let that happen? Praise Jesus. Don't lose your sense of awe. Peter said to Jesus, he said, I am a fisherman. But at your word, I will cast the net. He cast it and he caught. Immediately he said, ha, this is Kassala. He wasn't excited by the fish anymore. This is the fish he had told all night to catch. By the time he saw fish in daylight, he was like, no, this one. Mm -mm. Ah, ah, ah. There's something about this. Believers who have lost their awe of God. That's why we come on social media and we, oh jeez. Anyway, 
Characteristic number eight of the one that is dying daily. Submit to the disciplining of another. Ah! There are too many independent children of God. There is a problem. There are too many independent children of God. We have problem. Everybody is their own pastor now. Everybody is their own minister now. Everybody, and, and this is not, for crying out loud, who I be. So this is not me trying to guard territory or tough. But anyone who lives life and no one can say to them, stop, and they will stop, get up, and they will get up. They're, that person is head dead. For tr- In fact, in don't buy castle, I never know. Who cuts you? If you go to the book of Joshua chapter 5, after Joshua took over um, um, leadership after Moses died, the first thing that God said to him was that all the people, all the men of Israel, take a knife, a sharp knife, and cut each one of them. Circumcise them. How can you tell a grown man to come you want to circumcise him? The man had to submit. Do you understand it? There is a place... There is a covering you can never get if you choose not to be covered by anybody. Who's disciplining you? Who can call you and say, you, I saw you post that thing on social media. Take it down. And you will not argue. Who is that person that can say to you, I know you really want to fly, but you are not ready. And you will obey and stand still. Now we just change church. He's growing. He doesn't want me to grow. I mean, I don't come out to As I've matured as a child of God, I've learned more and more that God created us for relationship. And there are some of us, actually most of us, every one of us needs another someone. There are things, there's sometimes I want to get clarity out of the things that God has asked me to do. I just need to make a call to one person sometimes. And then the person is talking. I've not even told them what it is. And it's coming together. They are just giving me the steps to what God has shown me the end or shown me the beginning and I have no steps. What do you think I do to those kinds of relationships? I consistently honor those relationships. It's funny that now that it's time for us to transition from evening service to morning service, God didn't tell me directly. He told everybody but me. He told everybody my husband was the first person I, I think uh, then this person said that person said it that was now what I took back to him to say God are you the one speaking and he said I'm the one speaking the truth of the matter is I had sworn before that we will not do morning service but when you are submitted sometimes you need to understand that depending on what you are doing and how involved you are in the state of affairs even if God is speaking you may not hear Depending on how emotionally invested you are, even if God was screaming, you may not hear. It takes that person who is your cover in whatever ramification to say to you, halt. A lot of us are in marriages today that if we're just listening to the person that said, wait, let us pray. All the market you have bought now, you will not have bought it. But you know the funny thing is that these same people are the ones praying and asking God to help us resolve the issues we will refuse to obey to be, you know, that they may not have happened in the first place. If you look at 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 to 21, the Bible describes Elisha to Elijah as the one that poured water in Elisha's, Elijah's hand. I don't get it. The first time I saw Elisha, he was an accomplished business person. He had plows, he had oxen, he was doing good. There was nothing that he needed from one prophet that was going from one place to the other. And then they called him, put a mantle on him. He ran to Elijah. Elijah said, what do I have to do with you? He wasn't even nice to him. The Bible said he went back, slaughtered the animals, his oxen, used the plow to cook the meat. And then he carried his, his stuff and went to Elijah, Elijah. And from that day, the only thing we heard is that he poured water in Elijah's hands. Who 
who cuts you? Who is your discipler? Who is the person whose voice you can trust that when they speak, they will not speak over you if they did not hear God? I know we are all cosmopolitan. I know we are all civilized. I know we all have read our Bibles through the Bible app. The two, two, two minute read you are doing on a daily basis. I know you have all of that together. I know you can quote scripture. My prayer is that you recognize that none of us can become anything unless we submit to this process of dying. If we go back to our John chapter 12 again, the scripture is clear. It says, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Dying the way we are looking at it today, or the art of dying the way we are looking at it today, is a total and absolute surrender to the will of God. To recognize that anything that God says is what goes. When he says jump, our question ought to be, how high? Not, Lord, I have yam on the fire. Not, Lord, I just bought a car. Not, Lord, I just got married last week. If you knew you were going to be sending me on this one, you should have waited for me not to marry. Or, you, know, you should have told me so that I will not marry or I will not do this. That's not what we're saying. And sometimes, let me shock you. The things you have to show that you are dead concerning will not be spoken to you by God. They will be spoken to you by an ordinary man like you. But if you have the spirit of discernment, you will know that man cannot gather that level of courage to talk to you except God told them. Guys, in this era where we are doing our best to live well, can I encourage us again to do our best to die well? Because that's where the power is. To know that if I want to die well ultimately, I have to wake up every day. And my, just the same way you ask, Lord, what is in today for me? is the same way you ask, Lord, how am I dying today? Yesterday, he might have asked you to die co- by your money. Today, he may be asking you to die by your relationship. It's a process of constantly peeling off whatever will stand between us and the fullness of the manifestation of the stature of God in us. And this is not about, you know, we need to step back and take a look at coronavirus and all its attendant things through the lens of God for once. And see that, you know, I, 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 I ran into someone, you know, um, he's one of the reviewers of my new book, Bank Cable, in Abuja. And on Facebook last week, he posted something. And I have not stopped thinking about that thing. He said, we are a blessed people if God gave us the opportunity of a dress rehearsal. Everything that everyone is crying about, he stepped back and he said, because I'm in Christ, there must be something that God wants me to adjust. Because if this came suddenly, I will be toast. When you daily die, the gift that you get from God, one of the greatest gifts you get from God is the gift of perspective. The capacity to see as he is saying. So every man will be saying all the things that they think they are saying. The conjectures and all of those, you know all those things, pontifications will be all over the place. But you are not looking from their lens. You are looking through the lens of God. And even though you may not be authorized to say, you can tell that God has a hand in this thing. You can tell that God can still use this for his glory. A man that dies daily would get perspective from God. Something else I promise you will come upon you if you practice daily dying is that you would now recognize the voice of God every single time. He will no longer be a stranger to you because he's excited by people who are willing to die so that he can be seen. John said it like this. He says, I, I, that I may decrease and he would increase in me. In my Bible, I've checked it. Everyone who was not afraid of decreasing or dying, God glorified them in the end. You want to get where you are going fast? Try dying on a daily basis. What can you not give up?
Hallelujah. As I round off this, can I tell you that if you even by mistake said, did a nod and say, Lord, I'm willing to die daily, he will prove you. But it's a good prayer to pray. The thing I like about the things that God calls us to is that he calls us to what in our estimation is hard and really is hard. But he calls us to it and then guess what he does? He gets under the load for us. Just thinking about it or listening to me, you'll be like, this dying process will be too hard. I can't do it. That's because you think you are going to do it by your power. The Bible says it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, said the Lord. So there is a coming to God just to say, Lord, I do not know how this will work, but I'm willing to try. I'm here. Do with me as you would wish. If you are that person today, whether you are online or you would listen later. It begins from the place of, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Lord Jesus, I, leave, I give you my life. That's the first step towards dying. Dying doesn't just happen. There is an art to die. Don't die jaga jaga death. Let it be that you died the way that God told you to. And no, you will be dead and still breathing. Praise Jesus. This is not a message again that you are dead in the physical. This is a message that you are so dead on in your spirit that nothing that is happening in the physical matters to you except that which the Lord is saying. I like that song and I like to close with it. It says, all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever Love and trust him in his presence daily. I surrender. I surrender. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. All. The man that will truly die on a daily basis is the man that will trust God. Father Lord, we thank you for your word today. Lord, use it for your glory. Explain it to your children. Even expound it in my own heart as well. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, God of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you.